In this final episode, I'm going to show some of the yeah, multitude of issues that I had while I was doing this. Uh, before I get into that, I'm going to talk about a couple of viewer concerns. And the first one is going off trail and damaging vegetation and that. In this particular shot here, uh, where I'm putting the camera on the stump, there's actually a clearing behind it and there's a pathway that goes out to it. The Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority that takes care of this place. They allow, I'm not sure what it is, different events here. There's mountain bike races that I believe is the Big Brother, Big Sister group association. I'm not sure what that is. And there's public schools that come out here and teach about different things with the nature and that. And this particular spot off the left here, they cleared it out cut down a bunch of trees and everything and they had kind of a, a gazebo type thing and that was one of the stations where the students would visit and there's a few places out here where they've done that they just kind of cleared a part, a part out uh, this is not a national park or anything it's not super protected but having said that I am careful where I go off trail uh, the trail itself as you can see is nice and wide the monster fits on it so I'm not killing plants or anything as I'm driving through and a lot of places where there's been erosion. Uh, I'm not exactly 100% sure. I'm guessing people on mountain bikes have chosen a different route and they've already kind of flattened down new areas and that. And there's also a couple of places where people have started new trails, all shortcuts and stuff. And for the most part, they're still unofficial. They're not on any of the maps, but there's trail signs on them now, so I guess the Conservation Authority has adapted them as new trails. Because at all the intersections of the trails out here, there's a sign, a map sign, that shows you exactly where you are relative to the rest of the area. So they've made their way onto that, but not on the official maps yet. So that's not really a huge concern. Uh, it is something I'm aware of, and it is something that I, I try to you know, minimize my footprint I guess you could say so not sure what else to really say um, there are a couple really narrow trails that the monster doesn't fit on but there's no real vegetation right up against the trail and it's more pine needles or dead leaves or whatever and there's really a whole lot growing in there so I really didn't do, do, do too much damage as far as you know, killing plants and causing extra erosion or anything because most of it was already there anyways and in many cases that's what made it difficult to drive the monster through here because the tree roots and rocks and everything are all visible from all the, the soil being worn away from them so that was that concern the other concern is my smoking um i absolutely hate when you can see me smoking in the videos and when someone's taking a picture of me, I'll, I'll hide the cigarette and I always, always have. I don't like having it. I, I, I don't like that I do it to begin with. So anytime someone takes a picture or a video or whatever, I, I try to make sure it's hidden. And on the rare occasions when I'm driving the scooter and I don't have a coffee in my hand, <laughs> which is rare, then sometimes I'll drive with a smoke. And if I see a school bus coming by or whatever, I hide it. I just, 
I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud that I do it, but I understand other people's concerns with it, and I do take that to heart. So any anywhere that there's children around, I do not smoke to begin with, and if I've already had one, then I will try my best to hide it. I won't make it obvious. But unfortunately, uh, the scooter cam is basically a dash cam. When I'm out, it's always on, so it's, it's inevitable that you're going to see me doing it. And for the most part, the video is just for my protection. It's not specifically to make these videos with. So when I do make these videos, you know, it's, it's going to happen. So one episode, I, while I was waiting for the rain, uh, you could plainly see that I had one in my mouth. And the only reason I in included that clip was just to show that I was waiting for the rain. I was checking the radar and that. So somebody was concerned about that. Um, I understand 100% this is a heavy growth area and the particular spot where I was it was kind of an open field like a, a prairie pasture type thing even though it was on a hillside and there's a lot of uh, grass and debris and this year there's been a phenomenal amount of wildfires in Ontario as well as BC um, to begin with this these videos were taken last year and as you can see most of the time the ground is really damp and a lot of places in the shady areas it's almost like a rainforest right now there's been so much rain this year it's just been crazy like pretty much every day we've got something so the actual fire threat is low if there's a fire ban then any times that I have come out here then I don't smoke um, I do I do take that seriously yeah, if there's a fire ban, for sure, I do not. Um, the only, I guess I can't say 100% no when I was bringing the kids out here and we were by the pond. There's, there's no vegetation around at that particular spot where we were at because uh, the far end of the pond, it's really shallow and there's kind of like a rocky beach type area, I guess you could say. And when I first brought the monster out here where I stopped at the pond, that's, that's where we used to go right there it's not much of an issue there but like I say I, I do take it seriously if there's a fire ban I don't smoke out in the woods um, but like I say this this was last year when everything was super saturated and everything wasn't readily burnable as it was there have been some years I've been out here where everything's just super dry so those situations do happen but like I say at this time it wasn't and the other thing, I, I have an ashtray on the monster, it's in one of the cup holders, it's a snuffer. So when I'm finished, I, I don't even butt it out, I just stick it in the hole and it goes out on its own. So I don't even, I don't toss my butts. And even before the monster, when I was driving the old scooter, and when I finished, I, I, I didn't, never toss my butts anywhere, I don't do that. I knock the fire out of it and I put the butt in my pocket and take it home and throw it out. And just so you know, I, I stomp on it or run it over with the scooter or whatever to make sure it's not still burning. And I smoke my right down to the butt anyway, so there's really not much left. So those are a couple concerns that people had. Uh, like I say, I, I don't intentionally do it in the videos. It's just the video's capturing it anyways, and every once in a while you'll see it. But I am respectable that way. I always have been. And I always respect the laws and the warnings and bans, if there's a ban at any time, any time or any place. There is one more thing I'd like to talk about that I haven't actually been asked yet, but I'm sure it's just a matter of time. And that is coming out here at night. Um, I've never seen any signs out here prohibiting it. As far as I know, there's, there's no camping or there's no overnight camping there's no fires and no boats in the pond and the horses are restricted they're not allowed on some of the trails as far as I know those are the only regulations out here um, there may be something on the website for the Saugeen Valley Conservation Area that just kind of covers all the areas common knowledge type thing I've never really looked and to be honest 
I probably would anyways, even if it was prohibited. Well, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I, when I go out at night, I really don't want to meet up with anybody, so I tend to go out on nights that are raining, you know, which kind of helps guarantee there won't be anyone else around. So I don't need to worry because if you meet up with somebody at night, you know, the type of person that's going to be out at night is likely someone you're not going to want to meet up with anyways, so <laughs> I choose to pick the, the, the bad weather nights. Of course, that's never a guarantee. You know, I go out at night, so, you know, chances are other people will do it too. And you meet up with me, you know, I'm not a harm to anybody. So, but for the most part, you know, it's just something I would rather avoid meeting up with other people but as far as breaking the law I'm not sure um, I've never seen any sign at this particular conservation area specifically saying no night activities period so I don't know really what to say about that but like I say even if it was prohibited I'd probably still do it I guess I'm bad that way. In the rail trail, for example, I'm not supposed to be in at night. There are signs that specify you're not allowed to be in any unlit area on town property, and it gives a specific time, sometime in the evening to sometime in the morning. I think the morning was 6.30, evening I'm not sure. So that one I know for sure, that the rail trail I'm not supposed to be in at night. I have been guilty of trespassing before in the daytime and like I said before my main photography interest was documenting plants and animals in the area and a lot of times I have gone onto private property looking for plants that I haven't had pictures of already so I have been known to do stuff like that but as, as far as being out here at night as far as I know I'm not breaking any laws that way but like I said this if it was prohibited, I'd probably still do it anyways. So don't don't hate me for that. But I'm sure you know everybody's got something that they just can't break away from, and this is one for me. You know, going places at night, just enjoying the nature with without other people around. Just the thing with going out at night is there's animal life that you don't get to see in the daytime, and you can hear them. In some cases, you'll actually see them if it's early evening or whatever and there, there's still some light in the sky you'll see certain specific animals like raccoons are mainly nocturnal and you don't really see them in the daytime if you see them in the daytime then chances are they have some kind of medical problem and you want to avoid them but for the most part there's a lot of things that you can see in here at night that you just can't see in here in the daytime and a lot of times it's raining when I'm out at night so you know, a lot of the sounds are kind of drowned out by the rain some cases it's a good thing because <laughs> if I hear something I can't explain I just blame it on the rain so if anybody is wondering about being out here at night I'm not sure but like I say if it was prohibited I'd, I'd probably be doing it anyways so anyways it took a little longer than I expected it to but that's okay I needed to get those cleared up well, the purpose of this episode is to show the issues that I had and the very first issue that I experienced was the very first day that I got there and my very first stop. So I pulled up to the pond here and tried backing up and I was at full throttle and the monster just didn't want to go. It was almost a little too steep for it and there's not a whole lot of power in reverse anyways and it just kind of totally stalled the motor, but it's, it's really something you don't want to do. It's so hard on the motor. And one thing I wasn't expecting is the monster going over rocks is really jerky uh, as far as forward motion goes. It's not go and stop with the throttle. It's, it's when you put the throttle down it gradually accelerates and if you let go of the throttle it gradually decelerates and going over rocks it's not a constant steady power so it's just you move and then stop and then move a bit more and then stop it's, it's kind of 
a little bit annoying, I guess you could say. But it's just the way that the monster's set up, and and not just the monster. All all mobility scooters are kind of built the same way. There is one thing that I did have issue with, and these smaller trails are really narrow, and they're eroded. And the monster won't fit on them or in them, so I have to kind of drive off to the side. And when I do that, the monster will tilt because one side's higher than the other. And with the cameras being mounted on top of the roll bar, they kind of move the farthest, I guess you could say. And trees, and tree branches were a constant problem getting in the way. I come to crossroads here in the trails I know I can't go straight because it's really really muddy down in there and it's hard enough just walking through there and there's no way I was going to get the monster through it so I had to turn and I come up to this part and there's mud in here I, I kind of knew ahead of time there was a little bit there but I didn't realize it was as bad as it was so I come through try to pick my line and <laughs> got stuck on a tree root several tries to get through but the funny thing is it wasn't actually the mud that I was having a problem with it was a stupid tree root that I couldn't get past I get to the end of the trail here and there's two big rocks keeping people from driving down. Uh, I couldn't get between them so I had to go off trail and go around them. And I noticed there's a pickup truck parked out there. So <laughs> I come around and the guy's standing there. I know exactly what it is he's doing. He's kind of waiting to drain his bladder. So I'm not going to show him. I don't want to embarrass him but it's kind of bad timing. <laughs> One thing I didn't mention when I was talking about being out here at night before, the fire roads are fine because they're actually public roads. So if I come out here at night I can drive up and down the fire roads all I want and not have to worry because I wouldn't actually be trespassing at them. So, because they are public roads and in some of the trails when you come out there's actually a sign that saying public road watch for traffic snowmobiles in the winter time and stuff. So perfectly fine to drive on those at night. Of all the trails out here, this one has to be the worst. I got tree roots sticking out. Most of them are at least three or four inches high and they run in every direction and monsters <laughs> have trouble getting through. Uh, it, it sucks biking through here and when I walk through here at night I, I trip over them every time. I know that they're there and but they're just they're so big and they're so numerous. It's just difficult, really really difficult to not trip over them.
need an explanation here. I don't know what happened. Flat tire. Last time I encountered these two rocks, I was able to get around them relatively easily and I had my fender cam sticking out the side and there was lots of room to go through. Now, this is the day of the rain so I didn't have that camera on and for whatever reason I had a hard time getting through here. decided to try a new trail and this one goes out to it's kind of a, a grassy area everything's flat and ground is smooth and I figure I can get some pretty good speed going through there unfortunately I encountered this big pile of rocks I'm looking at it and these are really big rocks and there's no way around them so I decided to try it be careful because I can't hit any rocks with the front uh, with the bottom of the bumper because it'll bend the front forward I still haven't fixed that issue yet but I just try and go through it slowly and the monster just doesn't have the power to get over them so I had to turn around and go back First time I come out here, I out full speed across the boardwalk and towards the end and the boards are a little bit uneven and the monster tires were catching that, it kind of wiggled a little bit but it wasn't a problem. And then I came through at night, same thing, full speed, wasn't a problem, a little wiggle at the end. But this time I hit it and all of a sudden it just the monster was out of control. Well, that just kind of gives you an indication of just how quickly my ball joints have worn out. Now, there was just so much play in the steering now, it just it kind of went where it wanted to go. First couple times coming out here, I didn't have any problems going up any of the hills. I've been up this one before, and all of a sudden today, it didn't want to climb it. And I had this issue with uh, a previous hill on the same trail here. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference is, but for some reason today it doesn't want to go up the hills. Same thing again with this hill. I even got a run at this one. I still didn't make it up. I've come up through here twice already without an issue and for whatever reason today it just doesn't want to climb it. I get to the outhouses and I'm going to take shelter from the approaching storm. I parked the monster in between and I transfer the camera over to the waterproof case and I had originally thought that 
I messed up and didn't hit the record button. I was sure I did, but for whatever reason the camera didn't record, so I, I missed the downpour. But since then I have realized I've had problems with it again and again, and I've come to the realization that it was actually the cord. So I had to replace the cord for, I think the, the plug end of it was going on it or something. But if I didn't stick it in the camera just right, it wouldn't work. So I replaced the cord and I fixed that problem. And I'm sure you'll remember this one too. A uh, second flat tire. Uh, two flat tires in one trip. Yet another hill it doesn't want to climb that it had no problem with before. So I get off and I notice my light bar is partially on. I thought maybe I'd hit the switch or whatever and turn it off, turn it back on, it's full brightness, turn it off, and it's still, it's just, it's glowing. It's just partly, just enough to see it. Uh, the light itself is, is waterproof. Uh, my wiring is good. So the only thing I'm, I'm thinking right now is this switch that's supposed to be weather resistant might not be because the rain came down pretty good so I'm thinking there might be water inside it. So I'll push the monster up the hill. Sorry about that thing in my mouth. But don't understand but it's gonna stay on until it wants to go off I guess. And I had another issue later on. After I drained these batteries and switched over to my other ones, I kind of sat at the pond and waited because there was more rain coming. So I was going to stick around and I didn't record everything after that because I wanted to make sure I had enough memory left over for the trip home. But while I was out in the trails, I stopped and got off and I shut the monster down. Everything was off. The key switch was off. All my lights were off. Everything was off. And I noticed the monster's headlights seemed to be glowing. The same as my light bar was, but just, just barely enough to see it in total darkness. And well, I guess it wasn't total darkness. The sky was still a little bit light, so I thought maybe and the light was reflecting. I, I put my hands up against it and I looked in and sure enough they're on. Now I haven't checked this. <laughs> I never think about it at night but I wanted to check to see if this is always the case or if something got wet and I, I, I don't understand it because the lights do not have power unless the key switch is on. So if any water got in the front end onto the control panel or whatever, then it shouldn't make a difference because that's not powered until the key switch is on. So it's, it's a head scratcher. I'm not sure what to think about that. But like I say, I, I wanted to check uh, at a time when everything's dry and just check it at night and see if they're actually on all the time. I just don't know. That might just be a problem with the controller or something. I don't know. But I've never checked. I completely forgot about it after the problems I had with the monster after these runs. And it's just never come up until just now. So maybe someday I'll remember and I'll check. 
but I just, I can't figure it out. I did have one issue that I can't show you, and that's because it happened when the camera was off. Uh, it scared the crap out of me. This rock right here. When I was leaving, getting ready to head home, I hadn't turned the camera on for recording the trip yet. But I hit this rock. I'm not sure why I hit it because I knew it was there. But anyways, the back tire hit it and the monster actually bounced backwards and everything just instantly shut down. It scared the crap out of me. So I didn't look to see what error code came up because I was just worried about not being able to get home. So I immediately shut it off and turned it back on and everything was fine. So I'd kind of like to know what, uh, what error that would have brought up because I don't know exactly what had happened but it scared the crap out of me and shortly after that's when I started recording the first time I came out here and I was going through this mud and I got stuck on the tree root something unexpected kind of happened the tire was spinning against the tree root and I actually smoked it. If you look at front here, you can see the smoke going by. Unfortunately, the camera is on the wrong side. You actually see it was the other wheel. And this is the reason I put the step cam on. So I could see that wheel. Now I tried to replicate that, but for whatever reason, on this day I was getting too much grip and the tire wouldn't spin. And I tried to back up and I went sideways and this is kind of how I ended up in the tree and losing my power supply.
Well, that concludes the monster in its natural habitat. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making it, and I especially enjoyed filming it. But, uh, I'd like to have gone a little bit longer. That monster just wasn't up to it. But, such is life. I'm hoping my website will be up by the time this video is public, which will be October 3rd, but I suspect it won't quite be done yet. Uh, once my website's up, there will be extra content on this series. It will be full unedited trips. You can choose which camera to view from, and it'll cover the whole trip. No music, no talking. But I'm going to do each day from each camera, except for the upboard cameras, because they're just, you see what you see. <laughs> it's just individuals, which I've already shown in, in these. Uh, the main ones will be the whole trip. That'll be to the conservation area, the activities out there, and the return trip home without a break. So it'll be several hours long. If anybody's interested, they will be available. So, in conclusion, I'd like to say, if you have a dream, go for it. If I had to just kind of stay reserved like I normally am, then this never would happen. But, I wanted to do it. I'm pretty close to bankruptcy now, but you know, this it wasn't totally because of this. And a lot of factors that happened, especially the move. The move really wiped me out. But, do I regret doing this? Not at all. Uh, the only real regret that I have is choosing the monster over something else. It wasn't apparently it wasn't the best choice, but it worked out for a while anyway, so I'm happy with that. And I certainly enjoyed the time that I was able to do this. And I like I said in the first episode when I first arrived there, I can't describe how it made me feel. And there there's no words to describe it. I was so Elated, I guess, would be a good one, but no regrets whatsoever. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series, and hopefully, someday in the future, I can do something like this again. Thank you.